Who's ready to account for some interest bearing notes? You can tell I am. I'm pretty excited about this. So let's go through a quick example. Now remember that when we're recording notes receivable, that it has to be in writing and that a certain amount must be specified in the written agreement and that the amount that we're going to collect when the note matures must also be stated. So that is the criteria for a notes receivable. Now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and look at an example. So let's say that we have a four month note that is worth $6,000 and we have a 10% rate and the interest will be paid to us semi-annually. So because this is a notes receivable, we are the one that is lending the amount of money. So let's go ahead and quickly just draw out a timeline to actually illustrate what we're going through. So I'm going to have four months, one, two, three, and four, and we're going to be receiving the interest periodically throughout this. So you can tell that this is an interest bearing note because there is periodic interest. Now the $6,000 we're going to give up at the beginning, $6,000, and we're going to have to recognize that, that, uh, that loan of $6,000. So I've got this button over here on the side. I'm going to actually be using these buttons more regularly as we go through examples. So the recognition entry will be that we need to, well, what's going on here? We're losing $6,000 and we're receiving a receivable of a loan. So we need to debit our, our notes receivable, notes receivable, and we need to credit cash because we are giving up $6,000 of cash. So we report that and let's say that this transaction is on September the 1st of this year. Now the interest payments. The interest payments are the next part. So it says that we have a 10% rate. Now this is always an annual amount. So we're not re we're not receiving 10% each month. So we need to figure out how much we're actually going to be earning. So we're going to take the $6,000 and multiply that by 10% and then multiply that by one of 12 since that's for each month. And that will give us an amount which is $50. So we're gonna be receiving $50 of interest throughout the term. So the next part is to journalize create the journal entry for the amount of interest that we need to recognize. So what's going on here? This is the end of September. September, how many days are in September? There are 30. I always forget about that, but then you have the whole like knuckle rule where you count your knuckles, so it's an easy way to remember. Uh, but anyways, we're receiving cash, so we need to debit cash for $50. And the credit, what will be the credit? Well, we have this revenue of cash coming in, so we need to report interest revenue. And we're crediting it because we're increasing interest revenue, and that will be a credit of $50. Now, the thing is, all of these periodic interest payments are the same. So for October 31st, November 30th, they're gonna be exactly the same. So we're just going to have three of those entries. Now the final part is to actually de-recognize the loan and I've got a button for that too. So we're going to take that and I'm going to locate it below the journal entry and we need to recover the $6,000 that we originally lent out. So we have $6,000 that we need to recover. Now we can do this one of two ways. The first way is we can do it all in one transaction and say debit cash and we're going to debit it for 60, not 6250, but 6050. 
And the reason is because we're collecting the interest payment as well as recovering the loan. And on the credit side, we're going to have notes receivable, I'm just abbreviating it, and also interest revenue because we've earned that amount of revenue. So the notes receivable will be a credit of 6,000 and the interest revenue will be 50. Now the other way in which we can do this by looking strictly at just the whole double entry system, two entries for each uh, transaction, we could do it in a way where we have cash and notes receivable. So this would be uh, de-recognizing the notes receivable. So 6,000, 6,000, and then we would record the, the cash and the interest revenue. Because sometimes students are thrown off when they have three or four or five accounts all in one big transaction. You can always separate it in to two different accounts per transaction. It's just much more efficient to, to de-recognize all of the accounts all together. And this is a more uh, illustrative way of looking at it and trying to explain the concept to you. So hopefully you understood that. We're going to look at a non-interest bearing note in the next one. I'll see you guys then.